Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, sorry for the backdrop there. It's I'm making some changes to the office here and haven't quite finished it yet, but it'll be done soon. You'll see what it looks like then. I'm, I was running out of space. Uh, in the news today, we have some amazing, some great, some wonderful news from NCL Cruise Line. That lady lawyer who uh, suggested that maybe she might harm herself and says I was just doing it sarcastically. Well, she's back in court today and you'll never guess why this time. And also, unfortunately, we do have to have a warning out there because a passenger passed away doing something that most of us wouldn't think twice about doing. Okay, our first story. <laughs> I literally had a video done two days ago and I released it yesterday uh, to the new Rep CEO of Norwegian Cruise Line taking over for Frank Del Rio, Harry Sommer, and I said, hey, w here's some things that you can do that will make people want to go back on the cruise more and sail with Norwegian and everything like that, at least in my opinion. And one of the things I said is get rid of the darn muster drill, the cluster muster that you've instituted. No one likes it. No one wants it. Every comment you get about the muster drill is we don't want it. There is like a 99.9% .9 ratio of people who have now gone to that and don't want it. They want the e-muster drill. It's actually, I think, a better system, a safer system. It just costs more to do. And um, guess what? Norwegian has now backtracked on its decision it made earlier this year to go back to the, to the cluster muster, in-person muster drill. As of April 1st, April Fool, uh, they will be going back to the e-muster drill. Uh, why? Why this change? Did suddenly it become cheaper? Did suddenly um, something? No, people hated it. People hated it after experiencing the e-muster situation. They hated having to stop their vacation just as they're getting into their first day of cruising, just before getting ready for dinner and things like that, having to stop and just head down into this crowded room and listen to a very, let's face it, dull and boring presentation that does no more service than watching the video on your phone, hearing the horn on your phone, and then finding the muster station on your own. So very glad to hear Royal Caribbean is now going back to the electronic muster drill, and that will also send a message to the other cruise lines out there who may have been thinking of this to maybe save some money. I think a lot of them were saying, hey, let's see what happens with NCL and see any kind of backlash. And there was actually backlash. A lot of it. People did not like it. So good, finally, it's being changed. They're listening to that part of the complaints at least. Okay, we have another situation going on. Remember the, the solicitor, Caroline Fanning. She was seasick on the ship. She called down to the front desk and complained that she needed to move her cabin because that was going to be the be all end all of not being sick anymore is being able to move her cabin. And they said, sorry, the, the ship is sold out. The ship is full and we can't do it. And the only way we could do it is if there was some kind of an emergency. Or, and she made the mistake of saying, well, maybe there will be an emergency because maybe, and then she said the word, that maybe she will self harm herself. And that kicked in the protocol where security showed up and made sure she was okay, escorted her down to the medical office, kept her there, kept her away from balconies, kept her away from dangerous items. Even though she says she was just saying it sarcastically, this was the protocol. And then the captain decided, yep, sorry, we're not taking a risk. And they kicked her and her daughter off the cruise ship at the next port. She sued saying wrongful imprisonment and 
and that she was just being sarcastic, and a jury of 12 said, yeah, no, they were right. They were right to do that. Um, that's a protocol. They take that very seriously. You made the mistake of saying that. You have to pay for the consequences. The jury went and said, sorry, uh, you're out of luck. Well, apparently she didn't like that answer. Are you surprised? Are you surprised at somebody who would think that, no, 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 I'm right, no matter what, because, you know, I didn't mean it like that. I meant it like this, just because you took it out of context and everybody else in the world would take it out of context. You don't know me. You don't know my humor. You don't know my sarcastic wit. Well, your sarcastic wit got you kicked off the ship. And uh, are you surprised that she says that's not good enough? And now she's found apparently one of the jurors may have worked for the cruise industry in the past. Not presently, but in the past. So now she's looking for a mistrial, saying that the jury was skewed uh, against her because this person had worked in the cruise industry. Now, even other lawyers have now come out and said, uh, even if they did work in another or for a cruise line in the past, doesn't ex you know? Doesn't mean she'd be excluded from the jury. In fact, they may be uh, sought even more on that jury as somebody who would have experience as to what goes on on the cruise ship and protocols that happen, more of an expert in the field. Maybe, 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 maybe. Um, swallow your, your ego a little bit and admit that everybody thinks you said the wrong thing and you should just let it drop. But apparently, nope. If you, you're going to this much trouble, are you just seeking that payday? Or are you just that full of yourself to think, there's no way I'm wrong? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, imagine the money being spent right now on this situation from this lawyer and holding up courts and jurors and things like that. Crazy, crazy situation. Well, here's a warning coming up for the next one. It's another hard topic to talk about a little bit. So if you have little kids in the room, maybe it's time. So while you're getting them out, I'll just invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you want to keep up to date with everything going on in cruising, from the welcoming back to the e-muster drill on NCL, to cruise ship reviews, to what not to say on a cruise ship, to this next story, which is an actual warning when you're on your cruise, because I've done it, and I know hundreds of thousands of people have done it, and this can still happen. Hit the subscribe button, it doesn't cost anything. I hope you'll follow along, and I really do appreciate it. Okay, this one's a little bit of a hard story, because a family was on a cruise ship on the allure of the sea, and they stopped in, as Tony would say, Roatan. <laughs> I don't know where he started that, but that Robotan, he's got to do that um, every time now. But the, the family went to shore and they were out having fun and they decided they were just going to go and jump off a pier into the water. And how many of us have not done that before, right? Done it at the cottage, done it on vacation. I've gone clip like cliff diving like 20, 25 feet into the water. I've done that kind of, I'm probably gonna do it in Jamaica coming up next month. So I, I haven't thought twice about doing something like that. Unfortunately, uh, a Mr. Rucker, who is, uh, leaves behind his wife and four children, struck his head when jumping into the water and went unconscious. The family didn't notice him not coming up right away. And when they did, they contacted authorities right away. Authorities came and started to try and resuscitate him, but unfortunately was unsuccessful. And so it's a hard thing to say. Uh, 
it's just something we would all think twice. We don't know if maybe there was a stray board or he struck his head on a rock, jumped, struck his head on the actual pier itself. There probably will be a little bit of an investigation. Uh, he was returned back to the cruise ship so the cruise ship can return him to the United States. I'm glad that he wasn't left in Roatan. Uh, the cruise ship did bring him back on board, so the family won't have to go through that expense, etc., of returning uh, their husband and father back to the United States. So thank you, Royal Caribbean, for doing that. But uh, yeah, it's a tragic story. I mean, you're going on vacation and you're doing something as simple as jumping in the water from a pier. It doesn't sound too dangerous. It doesn't sound like, what are you doing kind of thing. And that's probably the reason it's more tragic than a lot of things that happen out there. So again, just the warning out there, always be aware of your surroundings. Try and have people around you at all times that are, you know, if you're doing something, that may cause injury at some point. Make sure people are actually watching you do it. It doesn't sound like the family was around him at the time when this happened because they said they, they noticed he hadn't come back up for a few minutes. And uh, yeah, again, just a, a, a tragic story for uh, father of four. And uh, yeah, condolences go out to the family. It's, it's, it's terrible. There was a GoFundMe page set up for the family to help them through uh, this difficult situation. And apparently it's raised over $20,000 so far um, from the community. So obviously this man was well-liked, well-respected to raise that money that quickly just in his local community. So uh, again, condolences to the family. And uh, I'm sorry this happened on what should have been just a great vacation. Well, I hope you appreciate this cruise news update. If you did, please hit the subscribe button, maybe even the like button, not for the stories, but for the content. And until next time, please, everybody, have yourself, have yourself a safe and a great vacation. Stay safe.